Now that the 2010s decade is ending, which trends are the most regrettable? <laughs> Fill in the gap challenge. 99% were just horrible for your health. Things like the cinnamon challenge. The worst I saw it get was someone tried to start the fire extinguisher challenge. The guy put the nozzle in his mouth and hit the lever. No matter what extinguisher you're using, this is incredibly stupid. What's worse though, is he picked a dry chemical extinguisher. The second he hit that lever, he blasted a lifetime's worth of microparticulate into his lungs. His lungs are absolutely, unequivocally, well and truly fucked. TLDR. Challenges lead to stupid people doing stupid shit. Wouldn't this just straight up kill anyone who did it? I saw the video, and I'm surprised he lived. It blasted the powder into his mouth so quickly that it exited his nose. Good chance he had lasting damage from it. I have a feeling a lot of people who got huge ass fat transfer procedures to look like a Kardashian are going to regret them in the coming decade. I remember seeing an image where a lady's BBL went necrotic, and she literally had a void in her ass cheek. Edit. NSFL, here's the post. Die Hartman, I'm trying to make deliveries. But I'm dummy thick, and my ass going necro is causing a void out. What are you doing, Sam? Get your ass to the incinerator. Just hook it up to your BB big booty. <laughs> Body dysmorphia in general is a real bitch. And Photoshop and the ease of access to social media is really expediting it. Girls can squat for months and months, and they'll get a nice butt, but it'll never be as big as the butt on that IG model who had fat transfers, hosed at the perfect angle with perfect lighting, and then shopped it to be just a bit bigger. This fucks with women. They can literally get addicted to surgery because of it. I've seen it happen. A close friend wanted to be thicker, so she started eating more, lifting more, etc etc. She got quite thick and curvy, everyone thought she was very attractive but it wasn't enough for her. In her mind she was still too small, she could barely see the difference. So the natural next step was surgery. The stupid huge boobs looked a bit silly on her frame, but that wasn't enough, so there had to be a huge Kardashian ass to go with it. So the fat transfer was next. Now she's racked up with debt from the procedures and looks ridiculous. And in her mind she's still not good enough and wants to change something else. <laughs> Facebook turning from a fun place to connect with friends to an anti-democracy data ghetto. An anti-democracy data ghetto is probably the most amazing and accurate way to describe Facebook. Someone on here called it the Walmart of the internet a while back. I enjoyed that one too. And if an old friend wants to connect with you, she's more interested in trying to sell you something, leggings, essential oils, weight loss products, makeup, jewelry, or recruiting you, than in connecting with you. <laughs> Gender reveal parties. Not the normal quiet events worth family, but the driving need to get more and more extreme with every passing year. I've seen parks ruined, beaches littered and all for something as basic as the gender of your unborn child. Spreading blue glitter everywhere doesn't somehow make the child more special than just saying, it's going to be a boy. They're already special, they're your child. It's basically become a competition, there was one that accidentally started a wildfire because of some type of explosive. Everyone is trying to one-up the previous one, while also trying to be more creative in an attempt to go viral. Also weren't there recent headlines of someone dying at one? Grandma if I remember correctly. Someone accidentally made a colorful pipe bomb. <laughs> that one time we had a clown problem. In 2016, the sentence look out for the killing clowns while you go catch Pokemon was completely valid. Well, it has to catch the kid. Gotta catch em all. The clowns never killed anyone did they? I dunno. The Wikipedia article doesn't mention anyone actually being killed by them, but there's several instances of them threatening to kill someone. <laughs> Kony, 2012. Oh my god that was this decade. The 2010s is split pretty evenly into two decades. 1991 and 1998 look very different from each other, just like 2019 and 2013 seem like almost different realities. I'd say 2010 to 2015 is really different from 2016 to 2019. Gangnam Style was 2013, but I couldn't imagine something like that taking off in 2019 tbh. Edit. Sorry, Gangnam Style was 2012. Gangnam Style feels like a lifetime ago. <laughs> Just all the family YouTube channels in general. I was astounded when I went over to a friend's house and her kid was watching one of these. They are so terrible. My niece is obsessed with them, and they're just marketing ploys to sell toys to kids. The whole episode was just look at this toy. And I have this toy. It's sick. My niece stumbled on taped birthday parties. She'll sit for hours watching other kids have birthday parties. It's like real housewives for 8 year olds. <laughs> I already don't like 99% of vloggers, but family vloggers are always 1000% more annoying. They always are ridiculously hyper, post endless challenge videos, and are generally obnoxious with all the money they have. There's also that awful family gaming channel, FGTV or whatever, that got recommended to me for a day or two, before YT granted me mercy, and I stopped seeing it. I'm not a huge fan of Casey Naysat, but I'd rather watch all of his videos back to back than sit through one ace family, chat wins, or shaders, if they even still make content, video. Edit. Just throwing this in, I don't hate Casey, hell, he's one of the incredibly few vloggers that I don't dislike. I'm just saying I'd rather watch every single vlog he's ever uploaded than watch some shitty family vlog. There was one YouTuber who covered one of those family channels, and the family was in the process from moving from their LA mansion into an even bigger LA mansion, with like 15 bedrooms, a gym, an infinity pool, 6 car garage, etc, and they were having some trouble with the landscaping or something, but they were like on the verge of tears for 9 out of the 10 minutes of the video, talking about how hard life is, and then the other one minute was spent plugging new merch. It's insane watching lifestyle creep in real time. Edit. Here's the video, from Drew Gooden, subscribe to him. 
That weird mustache trend that was popular around 2013, you know when teenagers would have mustaches on the phone cases, as jewelry and whatnot. OMG yes the mustache finger tattoos WTH. Oh man I bet people are regretting those. One of my best friends has a huge glasses and mustache tattoo on her arm. It's so hard to look at. Probably not, considering they fade so goddamn fast because it's an absolutely idiotic place to put a tattoo due to skin cell turnover rate. <laughs> Microtransactions in gaming has been unfortunate. Worst thing to ever happen to gaming. According to The Motley Fool in 2018, Blizzard had $2.24 billion in revenue and $685 million in operating profit. King, who makes Candy Crush, had $2.09 billion in revenue and $750 million in operating profit, that's the power of microtransactions. It's sad that you have one of the most complex games in history, both in technical and lore aspects, and a mobile piece of shit beats the crap out of it. The funniest thing is that King is owned by Activision Blizzard, or at least it was at that time. I blame normies discovering mobile gaming, we got fucked. <laughs> Social media influencers. Making tons of money and reaching fame by becoming a brand ambassador for bogus skin products never really made sense to me. Modeling is a profession of its own, but not everyone can or should do it. Instagram has made us believe that many of these influencers have perfect lives, and the inadequacy people feel when scrolling through their feed is extremely unhealthy for society. Becoming an influencer should never have been what social media was for. Connecting with friends has now turned into admiring strangers from afar, leading many of us to feel lonelier than ever. Unfortunately this industry is just picking up steam, it's not a 2010s thing. Over the past year I've seen the company I work for start pouring more and more money into this path, with increasing returns. It won't slow down anytime soon and I hate it. It's just a new form of advertisement made for the social media world that so many people are obsessed and enveloped in. <laughs> clickbait. I think you mean. These photos of the top 10 worst clickbait articles will shock you. At least early clickbait was a harmless Rick Roller tralalalala. Now they have people thinking they are reading legitimate information. You must be young or new to the internet. We've had clickbait since the 90s when ad click view incentives became a thing and, if anything, it was more insidious then. Nowadays, it's so low effort that it's obvious to most people but they click anyways because they're interested in that list. And you kinder just weigh how annoying the site presenter is against how much you care about the content. Back then, it would be entire sites dedicated to satanic cults, video game secrets, TGP porn link rings, etc. Things that were higher effort to pump out but would actually lock people in. <laughs> Rebooting everything for the sake of nostalgia instead of coming up with new ideas. It's like post-postmodernism. Re-postmodernism you got it. Yeah, but Ghostbusters was awesome. That really wasn't that awful. Why out of all the reboots do people hate on that one the most? <laughs> Being a dick to people on camera for likes from strangers. That simply continued from the double zeros. Happy slapping was a real annoyance. Even earlier. The You've Been Tango It advert from 1992 really caught on in schoolyards in the UK and Ireland. They reworked the ad and replaced a smack with a kiss. <laughs> this isn't a prank, it's a social experiment wherein we're going to see if people get mad when we walk up to them and punch them as hard as we can. I hadn't watched reality TV for years and took a job at a university where the TV had to be on at all times and students would come in to watch. They switch on MTV and it's a half hour prank show where they run up to people on the street and spoil the end of movies and shows that just came out. Part of my job unofficially became having everything I planned to watch next weekend ruined for me. Fuck you, MTV. I'm no lawyer, but I think that's more than enough justification for punching someone in the face. <laughs> Wealth worship. The Kardashians are an obvious example with Kylie Jenner's billionaire status. Also, high surveillance. Amazon's Echo and the like being bought and placed in homes, willingly. Wealth worship has been a thing since humans. There's always been the Janises down the street that have a bigger hut, more food, more women, more men, etc. It's just easier to covet what others have and imagine yourself having that much stuff with widespread easier access to the internet. Yeah I feel like this is very cyclical and human. I'm pretty sure each decade had their version of this. Yeah but I think what he's getting at is how that one Kardashian or Jenner had people send her money to become the youngest billionaire. Or how human trash Joel Olsten and his ill preach prosperity gospel and fool people into sending them money for private jets. <laughs> Highly overdrawn lips and eyebrows like, I can see where your real lip ended a half inch back. The fake ass swollen lips also. I don't know why anyone thinks this makes them look better looking like plastic. Oh god. I can't fucking stand the permanent duck face look. They look like they got their lips stuck inside a vacuum cleaner or they had an allergic reaction to an egg they were sucking on or something. Don't I look hot? No. Fuck no. You look like someone crossed your DNA with a lamprey. Haha <laughs> I am stealing this. <laughs> the erosion of our privacy and freedoms. Edit. Don't waste your money on silver, gold, and that crap. Edit too. Since this seems to be getting a bit of attention, let me climb up on the soapbox for a sec. Instead of spending your hard-earned money on Reddit awards, not just this post but any, donate to a worthy charity instead. Give to your local no-kill animal shelter, or buy some scarves and shit for the homeless this winter, I don't know, just do something that will make you feel good and help someone. Or buy yourself something nice. Be excellent to each other. That started in October of 2001. Yeah, but it definitely ramped up once Facebook and other social media came into the picture. <laughs> the rise of irresponsible journalism. The drop in civility. The drop in responsible use of social media. You can combine them too. 
I see news all the time now and it says Twitter user too young for Halloween says the snow hit him stuck in his apartment. Motherfucker that's not journalism at all, just pasting something off social media. Get outside and stand in the snow and do some real reporting. Also regrettable is the trend away from investigative journalism. Instead of researching deeply or looking into the history of a subject, we now have articles written about a tweet, and then more articles about celebs tweets about the original tweet. I must add, though, that the civility of the past is overstated. <laughs> Crappy video games that is only there so you can pay to play. This isn't going to stop until people stop paying for it. Addiction is real. Funny you say that. Companies that produce those PAY2 win mobile games actually hire addiction experts. MMOs too. And you'll notice that every other genre of game is starting to incorporate MMO-like features to keep you hooked. I feel like Reddit only ever talks about like 6 topics. We all could've named the top comments of this thread before clicking on it. Cancel culture, anti-vaxxers, flat earthers, it's just a prank bro. Clickbait and influencers. Microtransactions. Every R ask Reddit post that makes it to my front page is pandering horseshit like this one, and you're 100% right about the top answers being completely predictable. See you in next week's identical post. <laughs> Anti-intellectualism, refusing to believe experts in their field over some crazy person on the internet. I think it got worse this decade and I hope we leave it here. Edit. Yes, you should use statistical analysis to critically analyze data presented. Yes, you should use common sense. And people deciding that they are an intellectual because they believe something strongly. I have always called this emotional logic versus rational logic, aka logic. This must be true because I feel it is. Feels over reels. <laughs> the death of legitimate journalism. Replacing in with sound bites, partisan hacks, fake news and networks in such a rush to report anything that they don't bother to fact check. Replacing in with sound bites, partisan hacks, fake news and networks in such a rush to report anything that they don't bother to fact check. This used to be called yellow journalism. For those of you who weren't taught, yellow journalism and the yellow press are American terms for journalism and associated newspapers that present little or no legitimate well-researched news, while instead using eye-catching headlines for increased sales. Techniques may include exaggerations of news events, scandal-mongering, or sensationalism. By extension, the term yellow journalism is used today as a pejorative to decry any journalism that treats news in an unprofessional or unethical fashion. A K.A. modern-day clickbait. <laughs> the way people just shit all over things they don't understand. It happens with everyone, not any particular groups. I'm tired of seeing people so blatantly disrespectful towards things other people enjoy. If I like X and you like Y, why do you have to argue X versus Y? Can't we just have a meaningful conversation about X and Y both being shaped by the edit? Yes I know this has been happening since the dawn of man, but it has become much more apparent with the widespread use of social media. So you just gonna ignore W like that? You alphabetus. My grandfather was killed by a W, what's wrong with you? The W's did nothing wrong. Find a new slant. <laughs> Seemingly endless stream of movie remakes and sequels. Most poor, done mostly to make a quick easy buck off the name of the previous movie, and sadly, most show a lack of creativity and original thinking. I took some film studies classes and one of my profs, who was an animator and worked for Disney, Nirvana, etc. said that sequels were always a thing purely for numbers. I believe she said that sequels were guaranteed to make something like 30 to 40 percent, whatever the original title did, no matter how bad they were, because people trust the original was good. So some companies she worked for would put the cheaper BC team on direct to TV sequels that didn't need much design concept work or polish, while the rest of the studio ramped up for the next original story as a way to maintain income over the years between original releases. Not sure which companies might be neither listed, but I got the impression it was an industry trend. These are all kids' movies, mind you, and kids will watch anything so it might be related to that. Not saying it's a good thing for the properties, just that there is a reason it could be necessary. Unless you're an enormous conglomerate with bottomless pools of money destroying your own properties for short-term profit. <laughs> Disney has a long history of doing exactly as you describe. There have been direct-to-home video sequels to just about every film they made during the 90s. Disney Toon Studios. For people out there that don't know them. Their high point was probably a goofy movie in an extremely goofy movie. Lion King 1 and a half was also pretty good, albeit just as much a play-based tree do as the old Lion King was. They had a couple okay but really unremarkable ones like Little Mermaid 2. A few that were unquestionably bad, but still entertaining Kronk's new groove probably the best example. And then a lot of shovelware sequels that should never have been greenlit, like Mulan 2 were their last major work, Planes. <laughs> so real question, are we sure this is a new trend? It seems more likely sequels and remakes have always been a thing, but low quality entertainment has a shorter shelf life, so we just don't remember watch all the crappy remakes of yesteryear. Kind of like how people look back on recent generations and argue the music was better, when really only a fraction of that music, the most popular fraction, of course, is still around. The example that pops to mind is Dracula, which we've been getting film iterations of since at least 1921, probably earlier, however, as a lot of films from that era are lost. A few films stand out, but there have been over 200 films featuring Dracula. I've been surprised by how many movies from the 80s to double zeros were remakes of an even older film. Money Pit, 1986, was a remake of a 1948 movie, Cheaper by the Dozen, 2003, was a remake of the 1950 version. And these are sort of oddball films, rather than classics you might expect a lot of remakes of like Dracula. It just seems like there was an era when, if you were out of movie ideas, you looked through the films made in black and white, and picked one at random. 
I'm curious when the superhero movie genre is going to start fading again. I admittedly enjoy a lot of them, but the past decade has clearly been an industry seizing upon a goldmine of profits. When you already have a story written for an action-based summer blockbuster and the formula to produce them has become more streamlined, there's no wonder why the explosion has happened. The industry has churned out movies so fast that we're into 8th and ninth sequels within just a decade. It's crazy. Hollywood has always operated this way. The public loved westerns in the 40s, so every studio got into cowboy movie production for 20 years. Later, it was gangster movies, and when the video rentals took off, cheaper genre movies for horror and sci-fi fans flooded the market. 90s felt like all rom-coms, and now we are here. This too shall pass. Next up. Ultra-dark movies about the reality of living in poverty. Whatever the shit people are doing to their eyebrows. Like the 2000s were bad for eyebrows, but I'm not sure the appropriate corrective measure was to go from having the least brow possible to having the most brow possible and drawing them on so precisely you look like an anime character. Edit. Y'all didn't read my post. This is not a defense of the sperm brow. Or a criticism of naturally thick brows. The Instagram brows and the links people have posted are more what I am talking about. Yeah there's gonna be a lot of people looking back on their eyebrows during these years with horror. The rat tail of our generation. Social media making everyone feel like they need to be heard. It's one of the main reasons why stuff like anti-vaxxers, MLMs, Nazis, cancel culture, flat earthers, etc. exists. Misinformation is just spread like a disease within echo chambers like that. Social media has made me feel like everyone needs to shut the fuck up. I always say the internet is great because it gave everyone a voice. But I also say the internet sucks because it gave everyone a voice. Yes. And besides being heard, acting like everyone's voice was and should be equal. Random nut job on the street versus scientist shouldn't have an equally loud voice just because nut job has more followers. Millennials are killing the X industry. Often while completely missing that most of the millennials they're complaining about are years too young to be millennials, and that millennials aren't a single hive mind where everyone thinks the same. I always found that statement weirdly hypocritical, I thought we lived in a capitalist system, so shouldn't it be X industry fails to compete and dies by the hand of the free market? Not when the older generation owns it. If they fail, it's a malicious conspiracy. If youngsters fail, it's because they just didn't compete hard enough. Thank you very much for watching, don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Tell me what you dislike or love about this video so please comment below and hit the bell icon so you're notified anytime a new video is released. This is a Wecromedia production.